it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, we're going to learn how to crochet this super cute, plushy, watercolor Easter basket. This is such a fun little project. You can make a bunch of these up for people in your family. Uh, you could even kind of um, put a little snap on this and carry it like a, a cute little girl's Easter purse. But this basket is unique because these handles, now we did a bow on this side to hold the button in place, but this side I sewed it on tr very traditionally. Um, but the handles, you can unbutton them and use it for other things and button it back on if you want the handle back on. The other thing that's neat about having a button on handle is that you can carry it by its handle or you can swivel the handle back if your basket is stuffed full of things so you can turn the handle backward as well. It has a nice wide handle so it's nice and comfortable to carry and the yarn is just so fun and colorful and plushy. So we're going to learn how to make this bottom part of our basket here and then we're going to learn how to uh, crochet the handle and then finally add the buttons and I'm going to show you two different looks the bow button look or the more traditional sewn on button look. So let's get started. The finished basket has a measurement of about 7 inches across the bottom. It has a circumference of about 22 inches and our handle from one end to all the way to the other side here is about 15 inches. For this project you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a ruler or tape measure is always super helpful to have on hand for measuring as you go along. You'll also need two buttons. Now our handle is not going to be a fixed handle. We're going to put it on sort of like a swivel because I know a lot of times when you're filling a basket, especially an Easter basket, when you get it really nice and full, sometimes you just have to sort of flip that handle out of the way so you can pile it up high. So we're going to put our handle on sort of like a button swivel and I'm going to show you how to do all that. As a side note, these are actually printed buttons. I didn't love them with this uh, color yarn, but I love the natural wood on the back. So just as a side note, you can change the look of your buttons just by flipping them over if you like. Um, but you know, just any buttons you have on hand. We're gonna be using an eight millimeter L crochet hook. Now as a side note, depending on the manufacturer of the hook you're using, sometimes they use these letters interchangeably for different sizes. Just stick with that 8 millimeter hook and you'll be just fine. The yarn that we'll be using is Bernat Baby Blanket and this is a soft fluffy yarn and what really kind of drew me to this yarn was the Easter basket colors that are just popping out of this yarn. They're so pretty. Uh, the yellows, the blues, and the pinks, and actually the colorway is called Jelly Bean. So I thought it was like the perfect Easter basket yarn. Now I'm going to be using a ball of this. I'm not going to use the whole ball of yarn though. Um, you'll have a little bit left over. And I will have a pattern coming soon on eggs, little uh, plushy eggs that match with the same yarn. So if you have some left over, hang on to it because um, I'll have a pattern coming out very soon on little eggs too, made with the same exact yarn and color. Each ball of this is 220 yards, 201 meters, 10.5 ounces, 300 grams. It is machine wash and dry, so if you get some uh, Easter candy stuff on there, you could always wash it if you need to. This is a super bulky six on the yarn weight scale and it recommends the eight millimeter L crochet hook. So if you do need to substitute yarn, uh, just look for the super bulky six and the eight millimeter hook recommendation for that. And again, this is the Bernat baby blanket. So let's get started. To begin, we're going to put a slip knot on our hook. Wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. Bring the yarn behind the loop reach in with your hook, bring up a loop, and tighten. The next thing we're going to do is chain four. To make a chain, wrap yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see what we're going to do next. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start working in the round. So to make a ring that we're going to be working our stitches into, what we're going to do is work a slip stitch into the chain farthest from our hook. So that very first chain we made, insert your hook into that chain, bring up a loop. Now bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook. And we now have the ring that we'll be working our stitches into. As a side note, 
try holding your tail along the edge as you work and that will weave that in as you go along. It also makes it easier to cinch up the bottom and close that hole at the beginning as well. So for round one, what we're gonna do is chain two, one, two, and then we're gonna work 11 half double crochets into the center of the ring. So to make a half double crochet, we're going to wrap yarn around hook, insert the hook into the center of the ring, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through all three loops. That's the half double crochet. As you make more and more stitches into the ring, feel free to kind of push things over as needed, okay? Then two, three, four, five, pushing things over as needed, six, seven, eight, nine, whoops, ten, pushing things over, and eleven. So that chain two we did at the beginning of the round counted as one of our double, uh, half double crochets rather. So you should have 12 spokes on your wheel, so to speak. So what you wanna do is count two chains up and join to close the round with a slip stitch. So insert the hook into that second chain up. Make sure you catch two loops on that when you insert your hook. If you need to, the yarn is very fluffy, so if you need to sort of use your finger as a guide to kind of feel around. Now wrap yarn around hook, bring up a loop, bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. Okay, so round one is complete. What I like to do now though is grab my scissors and you can flip your little disc over that you just made and pull it nice and tight and you can go ahead and trim this so that's out of your way. It's not hanging around and getting in the way of what you're doing. So for round two, what we're gonna do is chain two once again, one, two, and then we're going to work two half double crochets in each stitch. So locate that first stitch, work two half double crochets in the first stitch, one and two, work two half double crochets into the next stitch, one and two, work two into the next stitch, and we're just doing this all the way around. So one, and two, next stitch, one, and two. Let's get some more yarn off of this yarn ball. Next stitch, one, and two. Okay, I just have to say as a side note that these colors are so pretty and springy and display so nicely on this basket. So I'm just continuing around, working two half double crochets in each stitch. We're almost to the end here. One and two. So this is gonna increase. This is actually the base of our basket. Next stitch, one and two. And we're gonna be increasing this base and then eventually we'll be working up the sides of our basket, okay? Now, when you get to the beginning of your round, once again, count two chains up, join with a slip stitch to close the round, and then we're ready to start round three. So for round three, we're going to chain two once again, and then what we're gonna do is work a half double crochet into the first stitch that you come to, and then you're gonna work two half double crochets into the next stitch. I just have to find it, it's super fluffy. The good thing about super fluffy yarn is sometimes the stitches may not be as easy to see as other yarn because of the fluffiness, but the yarn is very, very forgiving. So if you make a, a mistake somewhere or whatever, it's, um, it doesn't show as much. So we did two half double crochets in that stitch, one half, half double crochet in the next stitch, and we're just gonna continue the sequence all the way around. So two half double crochet in that stitch, one half double crochet in the next stitch, all the way around your circle, okay? Just get a little bit more yarn here. 
So next stitch, two half double crochet, one and two, next stitch, one half double crochet. So we're still increasing. Uh, we're just doing this round a little bit different with our increase. Okay, so one half double crochet in that stitch, two half double crochet in the next stitch. If you forget where you're at, sometimes you might lose your spot and forget how many you did. Just back up and see what you just did and that will inform you on how to proceed with the next one. Okay, so two half double crochet in the next. One half double crochet in the next stitch. Two half double crochet in the next stitch. So just keep continuing around. I'm about halfway around, but just keep continuing all the way around and we'll rejoin for round four next. Okay, just coming up to the end of our round, working the same sequence that we did for the whole thing. So then count two chains up, join with a slip stitch, same thing we've been doing. And our base has grown quite a bit and it looks so pretty and squishy. It's just such a fun yarn to work with. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is start round four. That will be the last round of our base. Then we're gonna start coming up the sides and, and working the sides of our basket next. So for round four, what we're gonna do is chain two once again, and then we're going to work a half double crochet into that first stitch a half double crochet into the next stitch. And I'm just gonna get a little bit more yarn here to work with. And then two half double crochets into the stitch after that, okay? So our sequence for this round is half double crochet, half double crochet, two half double crochet, okay? So work two in that next stitch. So I did one and two. And then we'll repeat. So half double crochet in that stitch half double crochet into the next stitch, two half double crochet into the next stitch. We're just gonna do this all the way around. Let's do a few more together and then we'll depart and finish the round on our own. So once again, half double crochet in the next stitch, half double crochet in the next stitch, two half double crochet into the next stitch, one and two. So continue around and then we'll rejoin and we'll start to build up our sides. Coming up to the end of round four, working my two half double crochets to finish off, count two chains up, join with a slip stitch to close the round. So we have our base. This is the base of our basket. It's actually gonna be like this when we work it because we're gonna start building up the sides. Now to get a really nice 90 degree turn, now you may recognize what we're about to do from my other basket pattern that I released not too long ago. We're going to work some post stitches and that will give us a nice sort of turn the corner upward, okay? And, and give it like a nice little like braided look around the edge, okay? So for round five, what we wanna do once again is chain two. Now we're going to work what's called a back post half double crochet in each stitch around, okay? Now you may be familiar with a back post double crochet. The back post half double crochet is very, very similar. We're gonna do a bunch of these together so you can see it in action. So we did our chain two, we're gonna to go to that next post. So if you look at a stitch, sort of the anatomy of a stitch, you have the post, which is kind of like this column, and then at the top you can see now this yarn is very fluffy, it might be a little bit harder to see, but we've been working into stitches. So that little like loopy at the top is the stitch, okay? We're gonna be working and using the posts for this round. So to do a back post half double crochet, you're gonna wrap yarn around hook, you're gonna come in, uh, from behind your work. So take your hook behind your work, come up through that post over top of it and back down. Wrap yarn around hook, bring the yarn back through the way you came then you'll have three loops on your hook, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through all three loops. And you can see we've created this little ridge. Now that ridge will serve us well as we start to build up the walls of our basket, okay? And you're gonna see what I mean a little bit more as we do more of these. So all we're gonna do is what we just did in every stitch all the way around. So let's do some more together. Wrap yarn around hook, 
go from the back over top of that post, back down, wrap yarn around hook, bring it back through the way you came, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through all three loops, okay? Let's do that again. Wrap yarn around hook, go up, over, down, wrap yarn around hook, bring it back through, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through all three loops, okay? So you can start to see we're getting some of a little nice angle for our edge. So let's pick up speed a little bit because we're gonna work these all the way around. Yarn around hook, go around that post, yarn around hook, bring it back through, yarn around hook, bring through all three loops, okay? And you're just gonna continue working these. Now you can back up the video as many times as you like. There's also a slow motion feature if you wanna see this nice and slow. But you're just gonna work your back post half double crochets all the way around in every stitch. So let's continue with that and go all the way around and we'll rejoin towards the end of this round as well. Just working that last back post half double crochet. And then what we're gonna do is count two chains up once again and join with a slip stitch to close the round. So let's look at what we've done so far. You can see here, we now have this nice little edge. Remember I said it was sort of like a braided looking edge and it just gives it just such a nice base to sit on a surface, okay? So for the next couple rounds, the next couple rounds are the same. So what we're gonna do is work round six through 10 and just repeat over and over and over, okay? So let's chain two. We're gonna do round six together, but for six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, you're gonna do the same exact thing. So let's do round six together and then we'll be able to continue on our own. So chain two, and then all you're gonna do, this is probably the easiest round ever, is work a half double crochet in every stitch. So work a half double crochet into that first stitch, work a half double crochet into the next stitch, and the next stitch, and so forth, all the way around. So just work your half double crochets. This is what's gonna build up the sides of our basket. Okay, so just work that half double crochet in every stitch all the way around. So go ahead and do that, and then we'll close up the round when we come up to the end of it. So again, just work a half double crochet in every stitch all the way around. Coming up to the end of round six, working our half double crochets. Now we're at the end, so you count two chains up, join with a slip stitch to close the round. And then, like I mentioned before, what we're gonna do is for round six through 10, now we just did six, as you know, but six, seven, eight, nine, 10. We're just gonna be repeating round six, okay? So go ahead and do seven, eight, nine, and 10, the same way we just did it, back up the video as needed. And we're gonna rejoin, and when we rejoin, we are gonna learn how to add our cute little handles, uh, or handle rather, onto our basket. So stay with me, and we're gonna finish up the basket and then work on the handle next. We have completed our rounds. We're just joining to close with a slip stitch. So we did round six through 10, and our basket looks super cute. Let me grab my scissors. I'm just gonna cut the yarn here. We're gonna wrap the yarn around the hook, bring it through, and then what we need to do is just weave this last end in. Now, if you remember at the beginning, we wove that first end in as we went along with that first round, but this last one we are going to do with our tapestry needle. So grab your tapestry needle, and then just go right into the inside edge of the basket. And this is such a speckly yarn, you're not gonna really be able to stay in the same color family as you weave in your end. So just try to stay in those back loops only as you weave your end in, and that will help it camouflage it, uh, help you camouflage that end as much as possible. So just make sure you're just going in all those little back, um, back loops of your stitches. So go in one direction, and my tail fell off here. Gonna re-thread that real quick. Come back in the other direction. And again, just staying in those back inside loops here. Pull it through and just give it a little snip. Okay, we are ready to add the handle. Now, as you can see, we have plenty of yarn left. So also I have a pattern 
um, with eggs, plush eggs, where I use the same color yarn. So you can add some eggs to your basket if you like, or you can make a couple of these baskets. But there is plenty of this yarn left over. You could also make a little throw pillow too if you wanted to kind of uh, spice up your Easter and spring decor around your house. So the next thing we need to do is put the little handle on. Now our handle's not gonna be huge, and we're also, let me grab the little buttons we talked about earlier. I just have these wood buttons and I'm using the backs of them because the, because the fronts of them don't really match. They, don't, they just have a totally different look. But the plain wood, this light wood looks so beautiful with these pastels. So just as a tip, if you don't love the front of your button, try flipping it over and looking at the back. We're gonna make our handle on sort of a hinge so we can like swivel it around if we need to, okay? It's not gonna be super tall because if we make our handle too tall, it'll sort of sag, okay? So grab the same hook and the same yarn and we're gonna start working on this handle. We're gonna begin by putting a slip knot on our hook. Wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up a loop and tighten. The next thing we'll do is chain six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. This will be a nice wide handle. In that first chain here, or excuse me, the second chain from the hook, this loop doesn't count. So one, two, work a single crochet. Insert the hook into that, ch that chain, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through both loops. Work a single crochet into the next chain, the next chain, next chain, and the last chain, okay? So that will give you, if you count, you'll have one, two, three, four, five stitches, okay? So then what you're gonna do is chain one and turn, work a single crochet into that first stitch, single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch, and single crochet into that last stitch of the row. Whoops, let's try that again. Single crochet into the last stitch of the row. So you will have two little rows of single crochet that look like that. Now let's do our buttonhole. Now if you want to, you can just make a solid handle and just sew it right onto your basket. Okay, you can just sew it right on. or you can sew it on and make like sort of like a faux button like that. But if you want it to swivel, we're gonna do a button hole and that way you can take it off if you want to also. So to do that, we're going to chain one and turn. Work a single crochet into that first stitch. And you know what, let me zoom in so you can see what I'm gonna do because we're gonna do something a little bit different here. Work a single crochet in that first stitch, like I mentioned, work a single crochet into the next stitch. Now we're gonna create our button hole. We're going to chain one, skip the next stitch, and in the stitch after that, work a single crochet. Super duper easy. Work a single crochet into the last stitch. Now we have our little buttonhole, and then you wanna make sure too that your button can pass through that hole nice and easy, okay? Now, let's move on to our next row, which is row three. We're gonna chain one and turn Work a single crochet into the first stitch. Work a single crochet into the next stitch. Work a single crochet into that space, that buttonhole space that we created, that chain one space. Work a single crochet into the next stitch and work a single crochet into the last stitch, okay? We still have our buttonhole now that we worked a stitch into, it might tighten up the hole a little bit. So you wanna just do another test run with your button and mine passes through just, just fine, okay? All right, before we put some length on this handle, let's do one more row, chain one. So we have one, two, three, four, this is row five. So chain one and turn, work a single crochet in the first stitch and in every stitch across, okay? Just like that. My Yarn's tangling up. All right, just working those single crochets all the way across, okay? 
So now we have the beginnings of our basket handle. So if we zoom out a little bit, we can do, you can kind of see what it might look like if we put our handle here and our little button, which we'll eventually be sewing on. You can see sort of what it's gonna look like, okay? It's gonna come across. So go ahead and repeat row five over and over until you get the handle length that you like and you're ready to, just when it hits this edge, okay, is what you want. Um, I'm gonna go repeat row five and then we'll rejoin and then I'm gonna show you how to do the next buttonhole for the other side, okay? All right, so just a minute ago when we left off, we were on row five and we just repeated row five over and over and over again to get the length of our handle. So I went ahead and worked rows five, which is right here, through 23 um, in the same row. Now, if you want your handle to be a little bit longer, mine is gonna be a little bit more compact so it will stand up on its own and it's nice and wide. If you want it to be a little bit longer, you can keep repeating. But I did rows five through 23 by working that same row. Now, we're gonna add the other buttonhole because remember we did one over here, we're gonna put one over here as well. So what we can do is chain one and turn. Then you're gonna work a single crochet in the first stitch this may look familiar. It's, we're gonna do it the same way we worked it before. A single crochet in the next stitch. We're gonna chain one, skip the next stitch, then work a single crochet in the stitch after that, and a single crochet in the stitch after that. So now we have our buttonhole for this side. And then what we're gonna do is, for this, this was just row 24 that we worked, sorry about that. Uh, and then this is gonna be row 25. So chain one and turn. Now work a single crochet in the first stitch, a single crochet in the next stitch, a single crochet into that chain one space that we just created, a single crochet in the next stitch, and a single crochet in that last stitch. Just like that. Okay, in our final row, we're gonna turn, chain one and turn and then work a single crochet in the first stitch and in every stitch across. So just work that single crochet all the way across, just like that, okay? Very cute, very uh, nice and cozy looking. So what we can do now is cut the yarn and fasten off. So wrap the yarn around the hook, bring it through and then you'll want to grab your tapestry needle. We can scoot that yarn out of the way for now. Grab your tapestry needle and we're going to just thread it and weave in both of these ends here. So just go in through the middle of these stitches with your tail and you can just snip that with your yarn. And then repeat on the other side Just like that, go in with that tail through those stitches and pull it through. And then you're just gonna trim. And your handle is complete. So like I mentioned earlier in the video, you can just sew this handle right onto this basket and call it a day. Let me just zoom out a little bit so you can see. Um, we are going to do our buttons so that everything's adjustable and we can swivel it back. So I'm going to grab a little tiny scrap piece of yarn so we can sew these on. Okay, so moving right along, I am actually going to show you two different looks here. I grabbed a little piece of scrap yarn. It could literally be anything that coordinates with your yarn. I grabbed some kind of Easter eggy sort of colors. And I also grabbed a scrap piece of yarn because I'm gonna show you two different ways you could treat these um, buttons on your piece. So what you'll wanna do is just sort of lay your handle across. Now you can be really technical and measure this. I'm just sort of eyeballing it. And again, I'm gonna flip my button over, use the other side, and I'm gonna put it right about there. Now I am gonna grab this scrap yarn and we are just going to, now let me just lay that there for a moment. We're just gonna sew this on in a very traditional way. 
So you'll want to grab, now I used a little bit thicker of a tapestry needle a minute ago for this, this uh, weaving in my ends, but it's not gonna fit through this button. So I grabbed a thinner tapestry needle that I had on hand. So in case you're wondering, this is just some Red Heart Super Saver that I had on hand. I always have a lot of that. And then just position your button coming from the back with your uh, needle. And then you're gonna pull it almost all the way through, leave a couple inches, go in with your needle. And then just, uh, whoops, and then just do that a couple of times until the button is nice and secure. Now, if this is gonna be used and carried around by its handle, I would recommend this look because it, it's gonna be a little bit stronger. We're sewing it onto um, this basket. So it's gonna be nice and strong. Once you've gotten that through a few passes through your button, then you'll, what you'll wanna do is just grab the yarn ends and just tie them right on. I'm gonna do three knots, one, two, and three. And then you can just take your needle and weave those ends right in, okay? Um, you wanna sort of mask them. You can still see down into the basket. So you wanna make sure things are nice and neat looking. Sometimes when we sew things, we don't have to worry about the tails showing so much if it's going inside something. But in this case, you're gonna be looking down into the basket when you fill it. So what you'll wanna do is just spend a little bit of time making those ends nice and pretty, okay? So I'm just kind of tucking those in. And then you can do a little test and button your handle onto your basket. And it looks very cute. I love that chunky handle. It just gives it a nice, like a little bit of a different look. Okay. So for the other look that we're gonna go after, this is more of a dressier, kind of uh, frillier look. You're gonna bring your handle across and just kind of eyeball it. Again, if you wanna measure, go for it, but I'm just gonna kind of eyeball mine up and you can kind of give it like a test tug. So uh, mark it with your thumb, place your button there and just hold it off to the side for a minute. Then what you're gonna do is take your scrap ribbon and this time you're gonna thread the scrap ribbon in your needle. Again, we're using this thinner needle so we can get it through the buttonhole. And then what we're gonna do is position the button so that the holes are lined up nice and neat. And we're going to go into the front of the button. Make sure your tail's a little shorter than mine so it just one end is sticking out. And then hold it in place. And then go back and come in from the back and, to the, and come out of the other uh, buttonhole, just like that. So you'll have a little loop holding it in place and in the front you'll have two tails, okay? The next thing we're gonna do is take our ribbon. Let me just zoom in so you can see a little bit better. And we're going to just tie it. Now my scrap ribbon is about, I don't know, 18 to 24 inches. Just cut it long enough so you could tie a nice little bow. And we're gonna tie it tight onto the button and then we're going to tie a little bow. And this is just a little bit of a different look. You can really do whatever you like. It just depends on what look you're after. This definitely gives it um, a little dressy, little Easter egg kind of look. Okay, so we're just gonna tie that ribbon. Now whenever I'm making bows, you wanna kind of push and pull a little bit, play with those loops, tighten it up. And then if you wanna give it a little bit more strength, now kind of fluff those little loops up a little. If you wanna give it a little bit more strength, you can also tie the center, okay? So then once your bow is how you want it to look, grab your little scissors. Well, mine are little, yours might be bigger. I always use these little tiny scissors. I love these for yarn scissors. And we just gave it a nice little trim like that. Bring your handle back over and then carefully button it on without disturbing the bow. So we're just gonna kind of button it on there. And then you might need to, if your bow gets a little smushed, you might need to like straighten it back out. Okay, just fluff up those little, those little loops. Just kind of like push them in like that and make them nice and fluffy looking. Get those tails nice and positioned. And that's just a little bit of center everything. There we go. So that's just a little bit of a different look for our handle. So you can see on this side, we have a plain button with some coordinating yarn. And on this side, we have a little bow. So our basket is complete. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me just zoom out so you can see my basket a little bit better. 
I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you can fill this up with all kinds of things. And the thing that's so cool about it is that you can also take your handles and swivel them back. So if your basket is full of things and it's just bursting out, you can just swivel that handle back. So that is how you make the plushy watercolor Easter basket. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again.